Welcome to National Geographic Travel's first ever Google Plus Hangout. We've got Dan Westergren, our director of photography, out in Whitefish, Montana right now. And as well on the Hangout is Jonathan Irish, one of our National Geographic photographers and um, head of our Adventures program, as well as Tyler Metcalf, who is one of our photo producers on this project, and then myself, who runs the National Geographic Travel digital team. So. Welcome to the Hangout. Please feel free to ask Dan questions using the hashtag in Montana, um, and we'll try and grab them and ask them along the way. Dan, I'm turning it over to you. All right. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Here we are in Whitefish, Montana, and, you know, it's snowing. You can't really see much, but this is the kind of weather we come to Montana for. So let me show you. This is Central Avenue. And if we look up Central Avenue, you see the sun is playing us for a sucker, and it's not going to come out. But the beautiful thing about Whitefish, Montana, is this old-fashioned looking town. You look at these storefronts, and at the end of the street is Whitefish Mountain. And right now, all I see is snow and clouds. So Andrea, when the first thing, when we, when we come to Whitefish, Montana, you want to take pictures that represent what the place looks like to bring back in photographs a feeling of a place. And so one of the first things you need to do is to have pictures of the town. So you can either arrange to be out here on the street early in the morning when the light is really nice and there's no cars parked here, or you could do like I did yesterday, and I came when the Whitefish Winter Carnival Parade was happening. And you can see in my picture, shot at the exact spot I'm standing right now. Can you show them that picture, Andrea? And then um, in that photo, you do see Whitefish Mountain off in the background. Are you guys seeing what I'm seeing? Because I just see Carolyn. Yeah, we, oh, yeah, yeah, we're, we're seeing we're it, see the town. All right, great. So here we are. And then um, the next thing that I like to do in a town, and really the best way to cover a town, is through the residents of the town and the people that live there. And this is kind of funny because somebody just walked down the street. This is Greg Fortin, and he was my cross-country, backcountry ski guide yesterday. And I'm going to use him to show you how to take a beautiful open light portrait. So let's turn around, and we'll see how it's really kind of just gray and pissy looking out. There are a lot of diesel trucks around here, too. And so if I turn around, I've got Greg standing just underneath an awning. The awnings that go all the way through the town, you can see that awning there. And if we go down, let me show you what great portrait light this is. So Greg is going to take three steps forward, not four steps, because that means he would step on this ice and fall down. And so this is the kind of beautiful portrait light that I just love. And let me take a few pictures of him here with his coffee in his hand. And while Dan does that, I just want to let everyone know that Donnie Sexton from Montana Tourism is the one taking the nice uh, shot of Dan in action. Thanks so much, Donnie, for helping us out. So, so there's Greg. He's so kind. Did you just like appear out of nowhere? He quite surprised me because I spent the day with him yesterday. I turned around. There he is. Okay, so Greg, see you later. All right. We're going to go on down the street now. And I see something really kind of interesting here. There are these tiles on the side of these posts. Let me show you this here. And so here we have a tile that says, Make Art, Not War. Nice. And here's one in memory of Moo. What is this about? Well, I am at a place called the Stumptown Art Studio. And it's a pretty cool place. It's been in this town for a long time. So I'm going to go inside here and see who we can meet. And so inside, how's the connection? Good. Oh, hey, good. my name is Dan Westergren. Dan, Aida Hebert. Aida, you. nice to meet you. I'm from National Geographic Travel Magazine, National Geographic Travel Online. We're doing a piece on go where the locals go in Montana. Now, you were talking to me earlier today about this place. It's a nonprofit art center, community, community art center, where people have been learning to do art for 19 years. And it's on the corner here on Central Avenue. And it's just a really neat place. So when I visit a town, I try to meet people like Aina. 
Aida. And so we're going to take a portrait of her inside this art studio. Now, did, were you one of the founders? I was one of the founders. So, there were eight of us. Uh, okay, great. Aida was one of the eight founders in 1995. So let me have you sit right here. And this is a cool place. If I can show you around, there's artwork everywhere, cards to buy. So I'm thinking what I'm doing photographically is out this way are the typical street lights, which cast everybody in the shadow. You see that? So we're going to turn around. And now that same kind of open light makes Aida look really lovely in front of her art studio. So I'm going to take some photos of her now. For those that are wondering about camera settings, since mostly I was going to be taking portraits of people inside, I preset my camera at 1600 ISO with f2.8, and the shutter speeds are ranging around 30 to 60th of a second. So it's a little bit slow, but as long as I know it's going to be slow, I can just sort of hold still and take the pictures carefully. Oh, look at these. Can you tip up one of those paint, one of those yeah. pictures you're holding right there? So she's got some local artist pictures there. And there we go. That's a picture of the Stumptown Gallery. And I'm going to move on down. Thanks so much. It was great to meet you. Okay. Hey, what kind of camera are you shooting with? Right now I'm shooting with a Nikon D700, which does really well at 1600 ISO. Yeah. And so that's why I went ahead and set that at that high. Um, Sometimes when you go into these places, you would want to, you know, set up strobes or something. But usually in a storefront, you've got a pretty good source of light coming in. And the lens that I'm choosing right now is a Nikon 20 to 35 zoom lens. Uh, mostly, I'm using a 35 millimeter because the zoom is uh, at 20 millimeters. It's not terribly flattering to take pictures of people. Yeah. So the next place we're going to go in is there's this really cool shop, and it's called Whitefish Quilts Shop. And so. <laughs> All right, and we're going to head on in. <laughs> hey, Dan, can you zoom in a little? Um, I can only zoom in by getting closer to something. Oh, okay. Well, that works too. Oh, when when you, you get to, see? sorry, when you get to like detail shots, if you'll just get in a little closer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just have to move in a little bit closer. So th inside this shop, these are kind of cool. These sort of Victorian-looking Santa Clauses. I think I'm going to take a couple of pictures of these because they're very distinctive and help us see what the shop looks like. All right. And that's going to, um, this is the kind of place we look for. It's weird. This is like Christmas in February, you know. But there's just a lot of interesting detailed things we could take pictures of. I'm coming over here, and I have no idea what this means, but I think you'll find this scene quite amusing. We've got neon fedoras. <laughs> You might need to bring one of those back for me. And some crazy cow. What on earth is that about? <laughs> and then to make sure that we're in Montana, we've got a grizzly bear in the background. So let's just take a picture that's like neon crazy cow grizzly bear. <laughs> and that is somebody's vision of Montana. I'll take it. All right? So we're going to head out back down the street. Um... Let me switch the camera view for a second so I don't make you guys seasick. Now you just have to look at me. So the next place we wanted to go is there's a really well-known shop. Um, we're putting this piece together called Montana Where the Locals Go. And this is one of the places that was on the list. It's called Montana Coffee Traders. And it's just where everybody who's anybody in, Montana, in Whitefish, Montana has to end up eventually. So Whitefish, Montana, if you're not familiar, there's a train station that comes here. And historically, it's been one of the best ways to get into Yellowstone National Park because of that train. If we were to drive from here, it's about just a little bit less than an hour to get to um, the Apgar Visitor Center in Glacier National Park. So that's a lot of what's going on here is Glacier National Park. But in the wintertime, of course, there's Whitefish Mountain, which everybody loves. So um, let's switch the view back. What's the temperature out, Dan? It was three when I got out of the car. Oh, wow. So that's just downright fantastic compared to, you know, last week in Yellowstone when it was minus 36. All right, so here's um, Montana Coffee Traders. 
And so we come in, oh, what, what's with this neon thing? Let's find some more neon. <laughs> There's like an ugly doll, neon. Stands out against my background. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Now I talk to these guys. We're coming in here, and here's the baristas. All right. So, hey, I'm Dan Westergren. I'm Stuart. Stuart. Stuart Burke. I'm here with Nat Geo Travel, and um, we just think this is a really cool shop, and I, and I want to try and get some pictures of you, the barista, and take a portrait of you. I think probably we don't really want a picture of you necessarily just making a brew, but I'm going to set up a portrait, and so let me have you grab one of these fancy... Uh, just a cup and lean here against your machine. You can make a drink. Dan, can you order me a cappuccino? <laughs> yeah, a cappuccino. Well, let's see if he, let's see what he can do with that foam on top. That's pretty, you know. And so what I'm going to do here, sometimes when you're taking a portrait, you just start taking pictures when people are doing what they're doing, which I'm going to do that. The camera doesn't want to take pictures because it's cold. And you don't, oh, you know, sometimes those pictures can feel a little bit too much like what I would call a process picture. You're like, oh yeah, you got a picture of a dude doing his thing, but it's not terribly interesting. Usually for photographs like that, we're gonna, um, we'll go ahead and we'll get the drink, and we'll set it up. And then I like to just set up a portrait because if you're taking a picture of a person, it's just, you know, why not go ahead and set it up all the way. So what are you doing now, Stuart? Oh, he's going to do that. He's going to do that foam thing. Ah, oh, swirling the milk. He's got to heat it up. Yeah. So now I'm going to go in close. I'm using the video of the camera. But I would normally be doing this. Yeah, I would be doing this with my real camera rather than a video camera. So he's going to hold that up. And we're going to take some pictures of him. He's going to take a sip. Go ahead. It's mine. All right. And look at that chalkboard back there. We're including that in the background. That shows us a little bit of what this place is about. And, Stuart, I'm going to take that drink. And then I'm going to take one sip. And I'm going to come back and get it in a half hour, okay? <laughs> mm. Hopefully he'll make you a new one in a half hour. That's right. That's great. Okay, Stuart, thank you so much. We're going to head down the street. All right. Here we go. Hey, Dan, We're I have headed. a question from one of our uh, Google Plus followers, Pat Henry. Asked oh, great. When, when, you shoot, when you shoot any time of beer, do you use anything beside visual cues to inspire and forward the creative process while field? Oh, visual cues. How... how you know, I like to like, read like a lot about a place. Go ahead. That sounds keep we, going, sorry. Are we, are we still on? Yeah. Yeah, you were going to say yeah, something yeah. else. Anyway, so you read yeah, a lot visual... about a place? Yes, yes. Now, Montana, I've been lucky enough to come. I was here a year and a half ago in the summertime, and so I was really excited to see what the difference was going to be between the summertime and now. And so that was my main inspiration, was just to compare and contrast you know, what had been going on then. And it's really a different place. I mean, Lake McDonald, which we saw in Glacier National Park, is just completely frozen. I had never been to Yellowstone National Park. Um, well, I was there, you know, when I was a college student for a couple of years studying geology. And this time I was there on that morning when it got down to 36 degrees below zero. That was a bit of a drag. But I have to tell you, I spent two hours in the Old Faithful Geyser Basin, and I was honestly the only person there. There were some other people in, you know, their hotel rooms, but it was pretty nice to just have it all to myself. So anyway, I'm looking across the street now, and actually, there's this pretty cool shop. It's called the Red Caboose, frozen yogurt and coffee. So I'm also looking, when I'm going down the street, I'm looking for places that look really interesting. Um, and the Red Caboose, we're going to check it out. I think, let's see if we can't get a better image of there. There it is. So this is the Red Caboose. Now, this is actually another coffee shop, and I know we were just in a coffee shop, but when you're working as a photographer, a lot of times you kind of do things that are similar. We would shoot one coffee shop, shoot a second coffee shop, and then you decide when you get back which picture you're actually going to use. You never really want to put all your eggs in one basket, and a lot of times we double up 
on things like this. And wow, I really like the entrance here. So this is, I mean, this is photographic in and of itself just because it really looks like it's made of an old caboose. So bear with me while I shoot a few pictures here. All right, let's do the same thing. We're going to go inside and see if we can meet somebody interesting. It looks like the signal's still holding up. Yeah. What, how does your camera do in these really cool temperatures? It freezes up. You have to set a bit. Because they were too hard. Oh. It, was like, it looks like you froze up a little here, Dan. You may need to go back out. I'm Oh, I think we have lost Dan momentarily. So in the meantime, if uh you've been you spent some quality time in Montana. What was some of your favorites there? I uh I, Okay, I'm I back. Did. Oh, there you go. Oh. <laughs> well, that's a we bit think? of a bummer. It, it it's there it's just like a LTE black hole in there. So, we'll just we'll just move on. But let me show you something cool here. Um <laughs> they made all these like hanging things out of marshmallows. <laughs> so I guess they really want you to come in there and have some hot chocolate. <laughs> oh hey, self portrait in the window. Dave, we can't see you right now. We can hear you but we can't see you. You can't see what I'm seeing? No, we you're we we've got only audio at the moment. Alright, here I'm I'm going to um back down the street. I'll turn it off and come back. Okay. In the meantime, Jonathan, you want to answer that question I posed? Oh, yeah, my favorite parts about Montana or in Montana, my favorite, I love Glacier National Park. Glacier is one of my favorite places. I used to lead bike tours there a long time ago, and uh, riding over, the going to the Sun Road is like one of the greatest rides. It's just a, it's such a beautiful park. Um, so I love Glacier National Park. It's one of my favorite places in the world. So oh, nice. I look, Can so you see, just, am now I on got, now? Dan. We got you're, you. Okay, you're back on, Dan. Okay, great. So um, we can go ahead and keep talking a little bit. We're going to go down the street. It's, a, it's about a block, and we're going to the um, Great Northern Brewing Company. And this is, this is the, uh, well, the tallest building in Whitefish, Montana. It's three stories, and all the other buildings are two stories high. So you know it's this like a skyscraper around here. Um, but it's a local brew, uh, brew pub. And I was talking to the brewmaster there the other day, and they have the most amazing looking brew room. And so that's the point, is to go in there and make a picture of the brewmaster in his brew pub. Cool. So, Dave, so, you were in, you said, negative 36 degree weather the other yeah. day. Is there anything <laughs> yeah, special you had to do to pre prepare for that, or other than just having mm -hmm. tough skin? No, you know, the main thing is, um, for me, you know, it's all about your hands get really cold. And when you touch your cameras, even if you have a thin, you know, you have gloves on, it just sucks the heat right out of your hands. And so I have these massively huge mittens, which are impossible to take pictures in. But what you do is you have a thin pair of gloves, you put your hands in the big mittens, and then, honestly, what you just work until your hands are so cold, you kind of, you know, need to do something about it. And so I put my hands back in the mittens and start swinging my arms around, and the blood comes <laughs> back in about five or six minutes, you're good. So. That's a good tip. I'll remember that one. <laughs> what about protecting your camera, Dan? Um, for this particular one, at the end of the day, I was always able to go inside somewhere. So I didn't really do much to protect my camera. Um, once you manage the batteries, that works pretty well. With the camera, um, if you go look on my Instagram feed, you'll see a picture I put up there called Camera Torture, where I put brought the camera inside, and it just got completely covered in frost as soon as I brought it inside. But after an hour or so, it was fine. <laughs> and so a lot of these cameras, like this particular Nikon camera, it's pretty well weather sealed. So I wasn't really too worried about what would happen to it. Um, there was a point where I got some ice drops on the front of the lens. That was a little difficult to deal with. Um, but I just carefully, I put the camera inside my jacket until the ice drops melted so I could sort of flick them off with my fingernail, and then it was okay. All right, so we are at the Great Northern Brewing Company. 
Can you see that? Oh wait, I'm you're looking at me. Just a second. <laughs> there we go. Great Northern Brewer Brewing Company. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna hang up again for a few seconds. I'm gonna pick up their Wi-Fi network, and then we'll be able to photograph in the brew pub. Okay. See you in seven. I actually have drank at the Great Northern Brewing Company before. I love it. It's a great bar. <laughs> Classic place. Talk about where the locals go. We'll join up with Dan after this. <laughs> All right. Everybody there? Yep, we're here. All right, here we are. We're in the Great Northern Brewing Company. And th this is Joe. Joe is the brewmaster. And he's going to take us in the back and show us where they brew the beer. All right. Walking through a little dark hallway, and then we come out here, and it's just like brewing heaven. Look at that. Wow. Th those are the kegs, but this is where the magic happens. There's Joe. Okay, so I scouted this place out ahead of time. I mean, we do this a lot with photography. You might spend an afternoon just walking down the street, introducing yourself to people, not necessarily shooting the pictures exactly then. You're trying to make a list in your mind of what you want to take a picture of and, you know, what's going to work out. 